Okay, so I'm continuing to play around with the new firmware, uh, the experimental firmware, and also the new kernel. And uh, I accidentally booted my Pi without an SD card in, and uh, and this is what happened. So you can see on the screen, uh, bootloader, April 16th, 2020, Raspberry Pi 4, 4 gig. Uh, it also tells you about the board, uh, SD card not detected. So let's have a look and see what happens if we go to the QR code open in raspberrypi.org there you go so that takes you straight to the raspberry pi site which allows you to download which is a nice little touch it also means that you can check uh, if your pi is working properly for video output without having an sd card so let's carry on testing okay so this is my raspbian install and uh, it's got the latest firmware on it and uh, 5.4 linux kernel and uh, I've been playing around with settings because it's less restricted than the normal one uh, and you can go higher on the clock speed. So if I go into my boot, I'll just show you what I've got running on my config.txt. So I've changed some settings um, on advice from the comments uh, and some of the things I've done. So I'm running at 2250, uh, which is higher than the Pi can do with stock firmware. So it's uh, usually 2147 is as high as you can go. I had to get the over voltage quite high to be able to run it at this and you do invalidate your warranty by going over 6 so I don't recommend it to to others, it's up to you what you do with your own Pi. Uh, this, uh, this means that the Pi uses 64 bit and uh, this is supposed to give more help to graphics uh, so it's supposed to sort of share some RAM with graphics and this is the real KMS display driver I read a little bit about it. I'll put the sort of threads I was reading about what, what all these do but the main thing I think is the clock speed running at 2250 uh, and I'm doing this really for RetroArch. If I run Chromium uh, it freezes at some point but, uh, but everything else seems to be fine so I need to quit out of this and I'll do a proper restart and it will restart in RetroPie just so Raspbian's not running in the background. Okay, so here's RetroPie. Boot straight into RetroPie. It was one of the options you could pick. So let's try out N64 because I've been trying to uh, see how good the N64 is working. Uh, and I had some games that weren't working particularly well, which is Destruction Derby and Excitebike. They still exhibit this weird slowdown, which other games don't. So if I go, for instance, for V-Rally, so this is running at 1080. So you can see this. Well, it, it's weird because it says it's running at 19.93, but it doesn't. It doesn't feel like it. Um, so I think the FPS is wrong there. Unless this game is meant to run at that frame rate, and it's just the way it is. But from a speed point of view. It, oh, am I going to take that? Oh, from a speed point of view, it seems to be fine. So I wonder because it never gets over the twenty. I wonder if it is meant to run at twenty. So Doom. Where's oh Strafe is left and right. So you can see that from a speed point of view, the controls are, are, are weird. But uh, from a speed point of view, it feels fast. You can see it's running at 30. So you can see that from a speed point of view, I just I can't get used to these controls having it on the right and left button. Oh, terrible shot, but it worked. So you can see that it, it stays at 30. Uh, it's very stable and it works really well. Formula One. So you can see the accelerator is working nice and speedy. I don't know what happens there. Am I supposed to kick it into gear or something? It's very jerky. Let's see if we can make our way up through. So you can see it stays around about 30, which is what it's supposed to be at, and it does feel really quite fast. It's very, it's very jerky. <laughs> Look at that. Okay, so road rash. But this actually feels nice and smooth. What's that do? 
So I can wheelie. I can't see what... Oh, so, right, the right stick is punch. <laughs> well, that slows it down, though. Oh, oh, oh. A little bit out of shape there. Maybe it's when there's more characters. But it doesn't slow down to, like, an unplayable rate. Oh, I've got a weapon. <laughs> so I don't know what Tarzan is like. I just turned off the music and he said, lovely tune. <laughs> yeah, so this stays around about 30 FPS, which is decent. Again, obviously what it's meant to run at, I guess. Oh, that's my... That's better. So let's try something else. Xena Warrior Princess. Xena. So this uses the left stick to move around and the right stick to attack. Like that. And then left, no, right button is jump. Oh. And then you can flick up with the left stick. But you can see it's sticking around 30, so it's working fine. <laughs> ready the rumble boxing. Let's get ready to rumble. So so this moves moves nice and fast, you can see. Again, the right stick is attack. I don't really know what any of the other buttons do. Well, that's a dodge, is it? But you can see from a speed point of view, it feels absolutely fine. Oh. I don't know any of the special moves. Oh. Oh, I can't get out of the way. So, really, the rumble works fine. So, really, um, just to show that loads of the games work fine, uh, but certain games don't work well. So, Mario Tennis, a game that you would expect it to be able to, well, I would expect it to be able to play, uh, without too much issue because something like Virtua Tennis works on lots of platforms and, and looks really nice. Uh, it's a simple game, there's not a massive environment with it or anything. But I think it's down to these effects. They use a lot of sort of smoky effects and things. And the menus are working fine, nice and swift. But then, as soon as you get certain effects, goes right down and you'll see the frames will dip. 20 is not accurate because it updates every 120 frames a second. It will drop down to about 10 or something like that in a minute, I suspect. Yeah, 9 look. So this is alright look. I'm running around. I can flip it up. But as soon as an effect comes on, so if there's a way of somehow getting rid of that, it's hard to judge it because the frame rate is so slow. See, as soon as the effects stop, so like certain shots, so let's try and use a different shot button now, that's a different shot button. I wanted something that didn't, didn't do, just did a normal effect. Nah, it's too slow to play. But, so not really that there's not enough power there or anything, it's just how it emulates that particular bit. Right, one, so the last one I was going to show was Excite Bike, And I'll skip into the game, because when it speeds up it's absolutely fine. But still on the start, it's just the same as it was in my last video. Um, I've definitely, things do seem a bit faster uh, with this overclock. Maybe with the GPU memory tweak as well. There you go, so I think it's got to the stage where it's running at pretty much normal speed now. And it starts to again become nice and playable. 
cool. So the power is definitely there. It's just it's just one element which which does seem to hold it back, uh, and that's the same on certain N64 games. So N64 is very well emulated, especially at this 2250 higher clock speed, uh, and all the settings have applied. But certain effects somehow need to. I need to. Oh. Nice reverse. See, weird, because there's an effect in the background there, but it didn't slow it down. It was still running at nearly 30. So I need to mess about with the settings and see if there's a way of getting it that it always runs at full speed. Anyway, I hope you like this. I'll keep testing. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.